Over the weekend on Twitter, Bow Wow was asked if he'd ever reunite with the cast of the movie Lottery Ticket to make a sequel. Bow Wow said, Brandon T. Jackson just got weird overnight. Death can't be the same people. And he been doing little interviews that ain't been sitting well with me. Hope he gets his head right and can bounce back. I never said I don't want to work with him. He just been on this spiritual trip that got folks not wanting to work with him because they think he's bugging out. Well, Brandon has responded to what Bow Wow had to say in an exclusive stand-up clip for Comedy Hype. Today we have our Comedy Hype analysts, Vanessa Fraction, Capone, and Pierre calling in to give their reactions. But first, let's take a look at this clip. No, Bow Wow said on the internet, it's all on TMZ, they said they want to do a lottery ticket too. He said Brandon T. Jackson can't be a lottery ticket too because he believes in God too much. <laughs> it messed me up though. It hurt me though. What he said, man. Now, Bow Wow, we was friends. I thought we was real friends. You know what I'm saying? I was with you back in the day. I'm going to y'all see the rooftop scene. That was real. I was trying to be a real friend of Bow Wow, man. It's just, he said we was TV friends, and that was it. TV friends, and he's weird because he believed in God. I was like, dang. It's like that? I was like, Bow Wow, I was with you when you had the braids with the receding hairline. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Who, who showed did you cry on when Sierra left you for 50 Cent? <laughs> it was friends, Bow Wow. I'm a fan first. I was friend. I'm a fan first. You could have called me, let me know that you was uncomfortable with my spiritual journey. Took it to the press first and everything. I was like, dang. Was like, remember you told me to knock the dude out that, that, that snitched on you for acting like you was flying private when you was flying Spirit Airlines? Remember that? <laughs> Now, there's a couple things that I want you guys to react to, but let's start from the, the top of it. Earlier when I read Bow Wow's, um, you know, response to people saying they want another, you know, want a sequel. Pierre, I'll come to you first. What are your thoughts about Bow Wow saying that, you know, he, he doesn't want to work with Brandon T. Jackson because he feels he's on this spiritual trip that has him bugging out? Um, that's, that's a very touchy subject, man. People people ride their spirituality different ways. Man. Some people are very overtly with it. Some keep it intro, introvertedly. Um, uh, you know, yes, in Hollywood, to be spiritual and be and be outgoing that is not a positive thing. People don't like that. They feel like there because a lot of negativity that happens behind the scenes and there's things that happen. And we would, even in front of the scenes, you know, they put people in certain positions in movies and so forth and TV shows. That if you are solid with your spirituality and you don't want to do certain things, you're going to be difficult. You're going to be labeled difficult to work with. It's just it's what it is. You know, you got to be more free spirit and do what they want you to do. You know, one of the reasons I left was because I, you know, I feel I feel Brandon's uh, thing when I I got out of the business for a couple of years. I just wasn't feeling right. This didn't sit right in my soul. Some of the things they asked me to do, things, and people have expectations. And you, you, you're like a machine. They, they, they take you, they use you, they deal with you, they move to the side. If you don't succeed, they move to the side. And we're human beings at the end of the day. And they get some of that treatment. We're not used to that. You know, we don't want that. You know, you're not right enough. You don't look right enough. You get too old. Whatever the case may be, that messes with people's psyche. So some people go to a spiritual thing to hope to hang on to. Some people don't and get lost out here. And it is what it is. So I understand what he said. Um, about people to look at you kind of weird if you stay on your ground on your spirituality. Capone, I want to come to you next because I know you've been very open, you know, on your social media about different things that you're experiencing. So what are your thoughts about Bow Wow, you know, saying that Brandon T. Jackson is on this spiritual trip that could have him, you know, bugging out and people not want to work with him? Uh, <clears throat> I thought it was coward, a coward move. Um, we all know Bow Wow ain't in the limelight like he used to be. So what they do is they ask you questions to put you in a position to where you down the next man. And that's what he did. You know, even if he felt a certain way, if Brand, he could have asked Brandon, like he said, and called him. And uh, I think that, you know, we do a lot of things, especially put each other down for the highlight of what uh, Hollywood, uh, you know, subject us to do. And I, I think that was a coward move. Vanessa, I want you to chime in on this as well. What are your thoughts about, you know, what Bow Wow has to say about Brandon T. Jackson? Um, about him being, uh, you know, being on some weird spiritual trip. I think it was his perspective. And as Pierre has stated, like sometimes when you go on that spiritual journey, it can look odd to others. They say God's people are a peculiar people. So I can understand why that would look odd to Bow Wow. But I will 
say what Capone said is you could have handled that a lot better. You could have easily called that man or say, you know what? I know that brother's on a spiritual journey. Let me check in on him because I would love to do a lottery too. You know what I mean? But I'm if, he's, if Brandon is ready to work, then it doesn't matter what spiritual journey he's on. You know what I'm saying? He was right there on stage doing comedy. So it's not as if he's just turning down everything. He may be particular about the types of things that he wants to pick up. But as he said, as Brandon said, excuse me, you could have, that was an easy phone call. That was an easy act at Brandon T. Jackson, you ready for this work? You know what I'm saying? Whatever. And then he could have responded accordingly with respect and so forth. He could have contacted the kingdom as Brandon T. Jackson. Now, Brandon T. Jackson would respond to Bow Wow, not on Twitter, not in the interview, but he took the time to do it on stage, as we saw. So I want to come to you, Compone. What are your thoughts, you know, seeing that clip of Brandon T. Jackson responding to Bow Wow on stage? I, I saw a lot of pain. He was hurt. He was really hurt and he was shocked. Um, like I said, I feel like uh, Bow Wow took that to uplift the, the, the credibility and the, uh, the attention that he's not getting anymore. And sometimes down in another brother, but uh, Brandon was hurt. Brandon was hurt. And you know, when, when comedians are hurt, we have a way of bringing it to becoming funny on stage. A lot of pain was in, in that, in that uh, joke. And that's what I seen. Vanessa, I, I want to come to you next. What was your reaction when you saw the clip of Brandon T. Jackson responding um, to Bow Wow on stage? I thought it was appropriate to respond on stage, you know, as entertainers and such. And since he called him out and said he was weird, he was like, well, what's so weird? You know what I'm saying? And went on to tell and air his side of it, as Capone said. And I think he said in the comedy, he was a hurt because he thought they were friends. And I can relate to that pain. There's a couple of folks I thought we was friends. And maybe we were, you know, sometimes friends are for a time and a season. You know what I'm saying? So all those things that Brandon was saying, I'm sure are true. And he did lean on you and all those things. But there is a such thing as industry friends and time in a season. So it, um, that season might come back around. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes as we grow, we, um, especially when we're working together, we grow closer together. And then sometimes we're not, you know, some people you attach to and then sometimes you kind of grow apart. So I'm with them that there was hurt in it. I thought it was an appropriate and humorous response. I, I, I was tickled by, um, by a few things. And, you know, that's how we do it. You know what I mean? Um, if you want to go public, then l let me air my side um, in that way, too. And as comedians, we have a really wonderful way of uh, making it funny. So. Absolutely. And the perfect platform to do it. Because you guys, you know, that's where you, you release your life. Things that happen in your life real time. So, Pierre, I, I want to get you to chime in on this as well. What are your thoughts when you saw the clip of Bernie T. Jackson responding to Bow Wow? Brandon T. Jackson, Lucky Bow Wow wasn't in the audience, okay? Because they would have been on and popping, bro. You, you talk talking about crying on your shoulders, I'm on rooftops and all this other kind of madness. You, 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 you pull out the dirt now, brother. Now you're going low, you're cutting low with that knife. But, you know, I guess he's really cutting low with that religion. So religious versus knife, you know, that's how the war starts. You know, most of the wars start because of religion. Um, but I thought it was funny that he did what he's supposed to do as a comic, took it to the stage, you know? Bow Wow might took it to a record deal, I mean, to a song. He had a record deal right now. You know, it is what it is. So... You know, hopefully the boys get together. I don't know how you're going to tell me. I was crying about Sierra, about 50 Cent, taking my girlfriend, and we're going to be all right. That, 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 that's a low blow. That's a low blow, Brandon. But Brandon comedian, so it is what it is. Absolutely. He did it smooth, too. He, he threw it in a real smooth light. Real smooth. Smooth. Put it under that real He was throwing, throwing grenades up there smooth. <laughs> about the private jet, the Spirit Airlines. I said, Lord. Absolutely. Now, Vanessa, I want to come to you because I think this this seems to be like a trend where certain people may turn their backs to, you know, on Hollywood and choose a different path and they're labeled as, you know, either difficult to work with or weird. Why do you think that is when people decide to like, hey, I no longer want to do this Hollywood thing. I'm going to pivot and go this way that they're typically labeled weird or kind of like an outsider or something to that effect. What are your thoughts? I think that... Um, People will say it's weird. First of all, there are a lot of weird people in Hollywood and it's not generally the people that walk away from it. So I will just say that it's a lot of personalities in Hollywood. But I understand that people know that it's a hard industry to get into. Everybody's trying to be a star, whether it's for the fortune or the fame. And so when you have been able to cut through it and do it at a high level and, and you're making that money and then there's such an opportunity for even more wealth and if you're into it, uh, the fame and so forth, you know, then they're like, why would you ever, how damn weird is it? There's so many people fighting for what you have. How dare you turn away? And so then you're labeled as weird or an outcast or whatever um, when you staying intact is the most important. And for some people, you may not be able to do that, you know, when you're 
in that inner circle. You might need to, you know, cut outside the circle just a bit to uh, be able to stay intact as a person. And still, Brandon still is still working and remain an entertainer. So. Absolutely. Now, Capone, I want you to chime in on that as well. Why do you think so many people are, you know, labeled or kind of outcast when they, you know, decide to turn their backs to Hollywood or Hollywood ways? I think Vanessa said it best. I mean, there are so many different stories about what it takes to make it in Hollywood. And a lot of them have nothing to do with being talented. Uh, you know, there's people who request favors to make it. There are people who do certain things to make it. And uh, if you are made those offers and you don't accept them, uh, that's when you become weird anyway. Like Vanessa said, she put it perfect. I agree with her 100%. Um, and some of us are just not cut for Hollywood. I'm not cut for Hollywood. And, you know, I know how to act. Like I'm very funny. But it's just certain things that I don't feel comfortable with with somebody because they got a position to tell me what and what I can't do. I just feel that way strongly. Absolutely, and I, and I don't think you're alone. Now, Pierre, I want you to chime in on that as well. What are your thoughts about, you know, people being outcasted when they decide to turn, you know, their back to either Hollywood ways or just Hollywood in general? Why do you think that happens? So I know so many good, I know so many friends of mine who are in the business who went away and got a job somewhere else. I'm totally outside the business, moved to another state, and I'm so proud of them. Even though some people may think they're a failure because they were famous at one time, but you're not a failure, you're success. You, you're escaping this life in a, and you're living in a better way. There's people who live in Hollywood right now who you see on TV every once in a while who are struggling mentally and financially. They are struggling. And some people who got out the business and live somewhere else doing something totally different are living a great life. So, you know, don't you at home judge these people like that. So people think you're weird when you leave it. No, man, sometimes you escape. Thank God you left before you were you hung yourself and do drugs or why being a, a homeless or something. So I don't see it being weird. If you can leave this business, man, and still be happy and do something else, God bless you. Absolutely. And I think a great example of somebody who has walked away and was labeled all these things is Chappelle. You know, when he walked away, everybody had a lot to say, but now everybody's kind of looking at him like, well, okay, you know, I see why he well, made that decision. So He's a good example, but he's okay, a great example. example. There's some people who ain't come back. He came back. Yeah, some people who don't come back at all. And he you left know, with a whole lot of money. Exactly. So you never know. Like somebody walking away, it can seem weird to you, but it could turn around and be right. something like Chappelle's case. So I think you all make great points. Also, we were able to get sit down with Brandon T. Jackson um, for an exclusive one on one that will be released next week. So we'll stay tuned for that as well and see what else Brandon T. Jackson has been up to and what else he has to say. So as always, I appreciate you all for chiming in. You heard from us and we want to hear from you in the comments below. What are your thoughts of Brandon T. Jackson responding to Bow Wow on stage? For Comedy Hype News, I'm Symphony Thompson. Put it in the comments. Down below. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's weird to you? Would you stay a go? Ooh. Did you enjoy today's show? You can stop by ComedyHype.com backslash shop to pick up your Comedy Hype News show mug today. And don't forget to always protect black culture.